not seen any, so we will move on to next, which is announcements and presentations. First item, A, receive COVID-19 update from Kaiser Permanente um, from our facility in South San Francisco. And we have um, our speaker who obviously is uh, from the South San Francisco um, uh, Medical Center and doctor, uh, I will turn it over to you. Great, hi, this is John Perry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, and I wish you could see me. Um, I apologize, somehow my camera is not working. Um, but uh, we, we will proceed. Uh, so uh, first I wanna thank you all uh, for, for inviting me to, uh, to give an update uh, on, on COVID. Um, it's, a, it's a testament to the changing fortunes of this pandemic that um, when I was first invited back in July to give uh, an update, it was about uh, potentially with a focus on how we could travel safely in, in the vaccination era. Um, and uh, of course, this summer has gone a little differently from uh, what most people anticipated. Um, the, uh, the, the, the Delta variant uh, had its own, own mind about what was gonna happen. And so this has been a challenging uh, summer uh, for everyone, uh, including those of us in healthcare. Um, uh, but what I'd like to present as, as an update is uh, I, I come to you with a, with a message of gratitude and hope, actually. Um, yes, we are tired. Uh, this has been a difficult summer, um, but I think there's a lot to be thankful for uh, and a lot to look forward to. Um, uh, first is because uh, while we, we are in our fourth surge, uh, there are, are strong indications that we are coming to the end of our fourth surge uh, in the Bay Area, uh, and in particular in San Mateo County. Um, uh, and the reason why I'm so grateful is because uh, despite the challenges of the last few months uh, and the last 18 months of the, of the pandemic, uh, uh, we have come through this fourth surge uh, probably better than most areas of the rest of the country. Uh, and that is thanks to all of you. Um, uh, if you've been paying attention, I assume you have, uh, to the San Mateo uh, uh, Department of Public Health website, you will see that over 90% of uh, the population in San Mateo County has had at least one uh, uh, dose of a vaccine. Um, and that has made all the difference uh, in this particular surge. Um, uh, I'm proud that Kaiser Permanente has, has played a, a large role in, in distributing that vaccine. Uh, we've distributed more vaccine than, than anyone else in the county um, uh, between South San Francisco and Redwood City. Um, I would also say in the next breath that it has taken a village uh, to get that done. Uh, over 200 organizations uh, in San Mateo have distributed vaccine uh, since the start of uh, our efforts uh, back in December. Um, and as a result, uh, we have weathered this surge uh, probably better than anywhere else. Uh, I would say maybe even in the country, okay? Um, and I think we're pointing the way towards uh, where we can go in the future. Um, because while we are obviously uh, uh, coming to grips with the fact that we might not have COVID behind us uh, and we might be living uh, with COVID for a while, um, I think the Bay Area and San Mateo County and Northern San Mateo uh, present an example of how we can successfully uh, live with COVID. Um, uh, all that good news aside, uh, what I would say is we still have our challenges uh, with vaccines. Uh, while again, over 90% of the population over the age of 12 has had a vaccine, um, we still have uh, the kids under age 12 uh, who are still yet to be vaccinated. And in some of our more vulnerable groups, uh, particularly uh, Black and, and Latinx populations, uh, the uptake of vaccine has not been uh, as high as we would like. Um, again, uh, we have been doing huge efforts, uh, both within KP and throughout the community, uh, to try to provide uh, uh, education for folks, uh, reassurance for folks, um, and trying to meet folks where they are. Um, and that effort continues, and we slowly continue to make progress, uh, but we're not done. Um, if it was just vaccines, uh, that might be enough, but in fact, I think our community has, has been uh, on board with many of the other measures uh, that we've asked folks to do as well, um, uh, including masking uh, indoors, uh, including uh, uh, keeping activities outdoors when we can, uh, in, including um, uh, avoiding uh, large gatherings indoors, 
um, and in trying to find uh, better ventilated uh, spots when we do need to meet indoors. Um, so uh, we still have a lot of uncertainty uh, going forward. Um, uh, we don't know what's going to happen uh, with kids going back to school, uh, whether that may uh, precipitate uh, um, more transmission. Uh, uh, we don't know what's going to happen with the flu season. Um, we are also struggling with uh, the deferred care uh, that's been put off uh, as a result of the pandemic. Um, and uh, we're also addressing the idea of, of the as we learn more about COVID, uh, our messages to the public uh, continually change. And I would ask your, uh, and beg your patience uh, that those messages will continue to change uh, uh, and please bear with us. Um, but all that said, um, uh, I'm incredibly grateful that I live in the community that I do uh, because of the trust uh, that we have in our leaders, our, our political leaders, uh, the trust we have in our medical system and the trust we have in each other. Uh, because I think as a result of that, uh, we are doing much better uh, than, than in uh, many other areas of the country where uh, this latest surge really has reached uh, crisis proportions. Um, and I think we are pointing the way uh, to where the rest of the country can go. Um, uh, I, they had the one slide and I, what I just wanna emphasize is, uh, uh, Yes, we are still offering vaccination uh, on a daily basis in, in, in Kaiser Permanente in South San Francisco and Redwood City. Um, yes, we are still doing uh, uh, testing every day uh, and we are preparing uh, for our flu vaccination efforts to start on September 20th. Um, so uh, while we still face uncertainty, um, again, I think we have a lot to be grateful for and a lot to be hopeful about. Um, I tried to keep it brief, and so I imagine there are other questions, so I would uh, uh, gladly take them now. Uh, doctor, thank you uh, for your update and your, your uh, comments. Is there any uh, questions from my colleagues? Not seeing any questions at this time um, from folks. Uh, doctor, we do want to thank you for your time. Um, thank you and to, to Kaiser. When I see some of the reports, I see that Kaiser has really uh, been a leader when it comes to getting the uh, vaccinations out and assisting in, in the community. So uh, thank you to you, uh, all the staff, and those that are on the front lines. Uh, our council and community are appreciative of what you have been doing and what you are continuing to do for, um, for all of us. So thank you. Great. Thank you. With that, we will move on to item B. Receive presentation and annual report from the Community Preparedness Committee. And I believe we will be going to um, conference room 115. And I believe we have our chair that will be giving our report. City Hall. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all. I'm going to give the report for 2020. Um, next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, we are an all volunteer group, as you know, and we promote emergency preparedness planning and education for the residents of San Bruno to mitigate the potential, potential consequences of natural and man-made disasters. <clears throat> uh, in 2020, our members were as shown. Malcolm was the chair, I was vice chair. George Pagonis, Ron Lepettis, and we picked up a new member in 2020, Sidon Milley. City Council liaison was Michael Salazar. Okay. Uh, and then just throwing this in here, we our members are the same for 2021. And we uh, our liaison from the city council is now Linda Mason. Okay, uh, our uh, city staff is Ari Dele, the fire chief, Gabe Slice, the battalion fire chief, Scott Rogie, police officer, 
<clears throat> and our ex official members are Walt Long, the San Bruno Amateur Radio Club, and Doug Kunz, who represents the Red Cross. Uh, we put, <clears throat> excuse me, we put these in so I could show you what we normally do in a non pandemic year. We go to all sorts of functions, community day at the park. Please stay at Chan Paran, fire station, open house, and all of those different places. We have a table with all kinds of good FEMA information. We have CERT information, and we even have a sign-up sheet um, for people that are interested in taking the CERT classes. And then we pass that information on to the fire department. And we, um, at the uh, fire station open house, we had a table there handing out some of the same information. <clears throat> In addition to that, we have we had uh, something called a go bag, which is the uh, emergency kit you grab when you've got five minutes to evacuate your house. And we uh, we had samples of the kits there. Uh, the kits can be commercially uh, bought, or you can make your own. I prefer to make my own and tailor it to my own needs. Post COVID events, you can see it's a very short list. We still have our monthly meetings, but now they are Zoom. There were no public safety events held in 2020, and none are planned for 2021. We were hoping for the Paramus Day and San Mateo Event Center, but that's been canceled. So, what we can do is have a monthly PSA topic, topics. Um, and to put on the fire department website and channel one <clears throat> that shows on there too. And we that's available at ready.gov slash calendar. There's different topics for every calendar month <clears throat> and it changes you know, fire safety, uh, all sorts of different things. So that that's what we've been limited to doing. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the only city funds that we have are the use of the copier, which the fire department is graciously, so we can hand out flyers and so forth. We are all underneath volunteers. We have lots of materials from OES, Sheriff's Department, and FEMA. <clears throat> FEMA has a lot of good information out. And then uh, we have uh, samples of go bags. And in every <clears throat> CERT class, we, our radio club would come and give a short talk about uh, the value of a of ham radio for emergency communications. Next slide. Uh, there were no in-person or Zoom CERT classes in 20 and 2020, 2020 and 2021, so we have not done any uh, radio training. Disappointing. Okay. One of the um, uh, groups affiliated with our uh, club, our committee, is the San Bruno Amateur Radio Club. And this club has been more active or as active now during COVID as it was pre COVID. Because if you're talking on a radio, everybody's in their house and they're talking on a radio, you can't get more socially distanced than that. So we don't need, we don't need to meet in person. We do have monthly a Zoom meeting now, which we had last night, um, and we covered the various subjects. The nice thing about um, the Amateur Radio Club is it's set up primarily for emergency communications when there is no power, no internet, no cell service. Uh, amateur radio can always get through. And our most of our members have a uh, station in their homes, and we all have mobile equipment as well. So we, we don't have to stay in our homes. We can travel all over the all over the city of San Bruno and still get out emergency uh, communications. In fact, um, let's see, we have a weekly net, and the net is just like a, a get together on the radio. And we have every net is primarily an emergency drill. 
<clears throat> we operate in three different frequencies. If the first two frequencies that are repeaters, if they're down and not operating, we can operate simplex, which is basically radio to radio, line of sight. And we go all around the city of San Bruno, which, as you know, is full of gullies and canyons and so forth. It can be hard to get your radio signal through. So we have mapped out citywide the good places that will give the best communications, uh, the best radio propagation in the city. So uh, let's see. Okay. That's a picture of some of the things we did. Uh, Pre-COVID, uh, the one on the lower right was um, Kevin Mullins' Health and Safety Fair at Tamperan, which was canceled this year. But as you can see, we had a table. We've got survey information. We've got um, SNC alert information, lots of uh, emergency preparedness information that FEMA is really good about uh, printing up. All sorts of things, and we as people go by, we reach out and say, are you prepared for an emergency? Are you, are you ready for the earthquake and so forth? And we get them engaged in conversation, hand out uh, leaflets to them and try to get them to sign up for a CERT class. So unfortunately we're not doing that. So here's some of the things that we're telling Anna. And as far as NCNC alert goes, um, a lot of people around town are still not signed up for this and have no knowledge of it. So as I'm standing in line at Lucky's, I'm talking to the checker and I said, have you ever heard of SMC alert? And uh, he said, no, what is that? And I go, it's, first, my first thing out of my mouth is it's a free thing, no cost, sign up and you get emergency uh, notifications of Fires, uh, explosions, road closures, water break, water main breaks, all sorts and active shooters, all the sorts of things that you need to know before you set out in your car. So anyway, uh, the go bag is one of my favorite um, favorite things because if you only have five minutes to leave your house and get out before the fire hits you, you have to have that go bag packed. Um, with things that you're going to need for at least a week. So this is a list of um, batteries. And, and another thing that people don't always think about is all the documents that you have that are very important. Um, your auto registration, your auto insurance, your homeowner's insurance. I'll bet nobody knows all 16 digits of their credit card. I, I never did. so. Uh, you can make copies of that either on a flash drive or make them uh, paper copies and have all of that in your go bag ready to go. So that, and also, um, if the power's out, the ATMs will not be working. So you should have a small supply, a supply, <clears throat> excuse me, a supply of small bills so that you can buy things. Uh, always keep your gas tank in your car. Never let it go below a half a tank. Keep it always filled because if the power goes out, the gas stations are not working either. So just a few things to be, uh, to be cognizant of. Uh, and knowing where nearby AEDs are located is good because we went, um, those of you that are, are trained to, to use those, it's, it's good to know where they are. And most public buildings have those. <clears throat> but I also like to, to mention that three of the members of our committee are amateur radio operators and belong to the club, and we are also CERT qualified. So we try to we take great pride in that. So that's it. Any questions? I do see we have a uh, member of the public that has their hand up. If they could be brought in, um, that's okay with council. Bring that in first, and then I'll turn it to the council. We'll go to the vice mayor. Please. Thank you, and you should be able to unmute. Are you okay? So I, I just wanted to reiterate something she said. Ham radio is a very old technology. Um, when I was growing up, when I was like a preteen, our neighbor was a ham operator. 
but ham radio is very, very important when we have the next major emergency, which we will. It'll be an earthquake, it'll be flooding, whatever it will be. Um, but I, 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 I think sometimes people look at ham as kind of this old obsolete technology, um, but it, it's really, really important. And I support them a lot. And although I don't have a license, I am a member of the club. Yeah. I recognize your voice. You've been to some of our meetings. Good to see you on tonight. <laughs> yeah, as far as uh, several years ago, when some of the really bad fires were going on up in the North Bay, um, there were, excuse me, no cell towers. Uh, some of the towers had actually burned down. There was no internet, there was no telephone, there was no communications, period, at all. And the only communication there was, was mobile amateur radio, uh, radios. And like I said, most of our members have mobile capability. We have an antenna, an antenna class on the top of our car go anywhere and you can still provide emergency communication. So it's very important. That's why we, in every CERT uh, class, in every CERT course, we pick a class and uh, give a little spiel about uh, the importance of ham radio. It's much easier to get a license now than it ever was. You're not required to learn more scope. So a lot of people find that very helpful. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Uh, the uh, next person, please. Next is Dave Dornler. Dave, you should be able to unmute yourself. Hey, good evening. Uh, Dave Dornler, KN6KOO, a member of the Ham Club. Um, I've been watching, the, attending the, uh, the committee's meetings, and I have to say that I think Janet and her leadership are doing a very good job with the support of the police department and the fire department. Um, I, 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 I commend them for doing a good job. I think it's tough with the limited resources they have. And one of the things that I know it's a topic to them, and I think I'm gonna bring it up because they might not. And that's their ability to, to deal with social media. Apparently there are restrictions that would help them get out to the community. And the community, getting out to the community is a very important situation. Um, it's good to be on the fire website um, because we're the ham club we can do what we want, basically. For instance, we had a meeting, and I'll give credit to Janet last night. We did it on go bags. And I was able to publicize it on Nextdoor and in a way that we wanted to get it done. We got 17 people there, um, not a huge crowd, but it's a little bit of reach. I don't know how they do it, but Janet, that's one of her favorite topics and she led the discussion. And it's a shame not more people saw it. Another meeting we had, uh, we actually had 46 people attended. Um, we had another program that I'm involved with and have been speaking to your fire chief about, and that's Arden, uh, which is a, we call it the disaster internet. It's a, it's a radio frequency uh, communication system that we're trying to push into San Mateo County and then connect up to the EOCs. We think it's very important. We're all, it's, it's an amateur, uh, movement, but we think it's important to them. Um, we had 46 people at that meeting, and um, the head of the, the group, Greg Allerback, um, we posted his speech. 460 people have listened to it. I would urge all of you maybe to listen to it, because it's something that we want to do as a public service. But once, last thing I want to mention once again is Janet and the committee do a very nice job. And they should and for their work. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dornless, um, for that information. Appreciate it. Seeing no other hands from the public, we will turn it to council for uh, questions or comments. Vice Mayor Medina. Yes. Um, thank you for the presentation and all the work that uh, you're, you're, uh, you all do. Um, I have a, a couple questions. Um, the first one being is, have, have you seen an increase in the attendance of your meetings being that they are now, or they have been on for a while on Zoom? 
I, I recall uh, as a liaison, we rarely got people to come to these meetings. Um, my second question is, do we have any updated uh, data on SMC alert? What percentage of our residents are uh, enrolled? Um, can we, we can turn that over to the chair or uh, fire department staff, whichever is best. But first one was uh, the attendance. Are we seeing a uh, an increase from our pre-COVID to today? Um, we are for our meetings, yes, because it's available by Zoom, and I think people are more apt to tune in on Zoom than they are to actually. Because we used to hold them in the basement of the EOC. So I think just a few more people are. Of course, there's a lot of people that have more to worry about right now than our meetings, unfortunately. They're, they're trying to get work. They're trying to juggle family and, and everything else. So but I think it is easier for them to, to check into our meetings. As far as that, SMC alert, you mean this? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I don't, I don't have any data on the, how many people have actually signed up. Honorable Mayor, uh, Ari DeLayer, Fire Chief. Um, please, please, Chief. Sure. We, um, we have been working with uh, San Bruno PD uh, and have launched a campaign to increase the participation at SMC Alert. And uh, that just happened a month or so ago. So we'll be looking to get some metrics on how, how, how much our, our participation uh, goes in. Uh, up in SMC Alert, um, and just remember, SMC Alert is an opt-in system, so that's an important thing to kind of remember for us. Is it's an opt-in system, and uh, we do have other avenues to get information out, but uh, that is a great one for routine day-to-day -day emergencies if there's any such thing. Excellent. Um, and w one last comment, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, would be my support uh, in finding ways to increase the social media uh, uh, outlets uh, that uh, these uh, boards and commissions that could um, post and, and to provide more information to the public. I, I think uh, um, I'm in favor of that. So thank you. Any other questions or comments from colleagues? Not seeing any at this time. Uh, Councilmember Hamilton. Very quickly, just want to say thank you to the uh, to the members of the committee for all the good work that they do, um, especially through through COVID and all the difficulties, um, we we very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member uh, Janet, uh, Madam Chair. If you would please uh, convey to the team and um, all those on it, uh, thank you for the work that they do and the time. And obviously, it has been uh, daunting and challenging in order to try to still get the word out and be engaged with the community but i think you folks are doing that and thanks to those that spoke who also are on the radio uh who are assisting in that as well so um on behalf of the council um thank you for the time and your efforts and thank you for being here this evening and presenting um uh the update from the community preparedness committee thank you um i do have one comment to make um a few things are open you know since we can't we can't sit at the table in various places because everything's closed. A few things are opening up. The senior center, for one, the library is open at a limited uh, scale. And so since we can't visit anybody, really, we've been putting the flyers up a couple of uh, some of these places all over town. SMC Alert flyer is one. And there's a flyer here that describes what to have in your go bag. And so we put some up at City Hall right here, Senior Center, the Rec Center at their new location, uh, Shelter Creek, we do it there, and Peninsula Place, we've also put some flyers there. And so even though people can't see it when they come in the door, they'll see the flyer and hopefully they'll pick it up and, and get some good information out of it. So that's about the best we can do at this point. We understand um, and, and again, appreciate it. And thank you for being uh, there this evening. Um, with that, we're gonna move on uh, under announcements and presentations. I think it would be appropriate just to uh, go to D next with, uh, since with the prior presentation. And that's issue and a proclamation declaring October 3rd through the 9th of 2021 as Fire Prevention Week in the city of San Bruno. Um, 
there's a lot of whereas is in this and that and and I'm really what what I am going to do is you know the traditional now therefore I Rico uh, e. Medina, mayor of the city of San Bruno proclaim fire prevention week October 3rd through the 9th which the motto is learn the sounds of fire safety but more importantly I think it's an opportunity for us as a community and council to really uh, thank all the first responders the firefighters and our team from the San Bruno Fire who have been dispatched along with many others in this county and other counties up and down this state. Uh, it has been a very challenging year and it seems where you would say this last year, you come into this year and it's even more challenging. So instead of a lot of those, I think I just wanna offer thanks and appreciation to our fire department uh, and the staff and what, uh, and what they're doing for the state and, and for us. And I mean that, I'd like to turn it over to our fire chief. Good evening, honorable mayor and members of the council. Ari Delay, your fire chief. And uh, thank you for the kind words in regards to our first responders. And um, we wanted to make sure we recognize uh, Fire Prevention Week, uh, October 3rd through the 9th uh, this year. Um, this is NFPA and the Fire Service's signature fire prevention awareness event. And it's the oldest continuous running US public health observance in the nation that was launched in 1922. So it's an important, uh, an important event that's been going on for quite some time. Uh, if I can have the next slide, please. Oh, you got it. Uh, the, the theme for this year, every year that NFPA of the National Fire Protection Association has a theme for their fire prevention week. And this year's theme is learn the sound of fire safety. And I'll give you um, uh, some, if I could have the next slide, please. There's five elements. They want to have the key messages for us for learning the sound of fire safety is when a smoke alarm or carbon monoxide alarm sounds, uh, we want people to respond immediately by exiting their home as quickly as possible. Uh, the second bullet point is if your alarm begins to chirp, it may be, mean that the batteries are running low and we need to be, replace them. And if it continues to chirp after the batteries are replaced uh, um, or your alarm is more than 10 years old, it's time to replace them. So that's an important component. Thirdly, they want you to test all of our smoke and CO2 alarms monthly and by using the test button to make sure the alarm is working. Fourth is if there's someone in your household who is deaf or hard of hearing, and this is one of the important pieces of that same theme I talked about earlier, uh, install a bed shaker or strobe alarms or lights that can alert a person to a fire and extremely important for someone who is impaired. And lastly, know the difference between the sound of a smoke alarm and a carbon monoxide alarm. Uh, the industry standard is for a smoke alarm to beat three times and uh, a carbon monoxide detector to beat four times when they do have those alarms. Um, next slide here is this is, it rolls right into this NFPA theme for Fire Prevention Week, rolls right into our 67th annual San Bruno Fire Department poster contest. Um, this is a contest that we've had with Allen School, Bel Air School, the Highland School, John Muir, Portola, Rollingworth, and St. Robert School. Um, this is an annual program that started, uh, if I can get the next slide, in 19. 54. If you see that on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that's an article from the 1954 uh, newspaper announcing the winners of our San Bruno Fire poster contest. And that was the first annual awards uh, that were ever done. So uh, the flyers uh, and rules and regulations and everything for the poster contest have been distributed to all the schools by Chief Slice and the Fire Prevention Division. And uh, Basically, uh, at the end of it, on October 3rd through the 9th, certificates uh, of uh, participation and merit and ribbons will also be presented to the winners of the winners of the poster contest at the assemblies at the participating schools. I get the next slide. This is just an example of uh, the process we go through when we announce uh, the winners and do the presentation uh, for Fire Prevention Week and the poster contest on an annual basis. And again, uh, October 3rd through the 9th, they will be presenting the awards. If I can get the next slide, please. This is just uh, a quick uh, copy of the web address if anybody is interested in further information on Fire Prevention Week, uh, www.nfpa.org 
forward slash FPW for Fire Prevention Week. And with that uh, as conclusion, and uh, have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Thank you, Chief. Are there any um, questions or, um, from the council? Okay, not seeing any. Um, then, uh, Chief, um, and and uh, I see that uh, Fire Marshal, I believe, uh, uh, Gage is in the room. But to the Fire Marshal, thank you for your work with the Community Preparedness Committee. And then also, Chief, thank you for your presentation. And again, on behalf of the Council, our thanks to uh, everybody um, for all the work that they do and with our strike teams and our, our thoughts are, are with all of them when they, um, when they, when they depart and then um, we think about them until they return. So again, thank you. And with that, we will move on to item number C, which is the update on the Recreation Aquatic Center construction. City Manager. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor, members of the City Council uh, and members of the public. Javon Grogan, City Manager. Uh, and the presentation I have uh, now is just to give the City Council and the public a brief update on the uh, development of our uh, lovely aquatic and recreation center. And so the agenda is, um, uh, I've just said the objective for tonight, uh, we're gonna go over um, the, the groundbreaking ceremony where we had an amazing crowd of the community. Uh, uh, talk about the communications plan, uh, which the city council asked for a presentation on that, uh, next steps and then questions. So, uh, Again, I uh, want to begin with the general overview of the project. We know that we've talked about it uh, for a lot, and there's so much anticipation on our community, but we'll just give a quick summary of, of what's going to be in this uh, new amazing building. Uh, want to also talk about the regular flow of, of, of information to the community and the council and the next milestones. So uh, first off, the uh, new facility will be just under 50,000 square feet. Uh, the building components uh, are, are listed here, and I'll run through them really quick. Uh, the first is a year-round aquatic center, uh, both an indoor and an outdoor pool with leisure and lap swim, as well as two party rooms, a indoor gymnasium with a, a track that rings around uh, the top, high school regulation courts that can also be divisible uh, and utilized for other sports, uh, classrooms for lifelong learning, uh, that are also divisible uh, and available for meetings and enrichment. Uh, is a community hall, large gathering space, uh, a, a rental space that also includes a catering kitchen, uh, and a, a fitness area uh, for fitness equipment, uh, dance, group exercises. Uh, in our construction, uh, we had a groundbreaking um, just a few weeks ago, uh, and so the, the, the construction fences went up, uh, and so September of this year through fall of 2023. Uh, and so why don't we begin by introducing the team and there, there there's a, a few people that I want to introduce uh, to the city council. Um, to, two of them are here tonight. The first person is uh, who we affectionately uh, uh, call Rod, uh, but uh, Rod McCray. Uh, he is the city's pro project manager for the project. He will handle all management responsibilities related uh, to the project uh, from the from from the beginning part, beginning in uh, this month in September through the completion, and really serves as the city's primary representative to both the construction manager uh, and the contractor. He will be the primary person uh, providing the city council and the community and our advisory uh, bodies uh, with updates. So uh, Rod is here today. Uh, Rod comes to us uh, with a wealth of experience. Um, uh, last of which he was a, a principal civil engineer uh, for the city of Mountain View uh, and completed various uh, 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 community uh, facing projects. Uh, so we're, we're excited to have him on the city's team of our project manager uh, for this development. Uh, construction manager, uh, many members of council have met George Sannon, uh, Griffin Structures, but the construction manager really served as the primary liaison to the contractor with the chief uh, responsibility of ensuring that the project is built 
uh, to the designated uh, standards and importance with all the required permits, plans, specifications, and regulatory requirements. Uh, George is a, a very key individual uh, of, of the team that is working on behalf of the city uh, with the contractor. Uh, and our contractors, uh, late road construction, they're the general contractor in charge of day-to-day -day operations and all construction uh, activity and management of subcontracted uh, and all subcontractors. And uh, uh, Patrick uh, O'Flattery uh, is the project superintendent from Lather Construction uh, who uh, will be supporting this project. Our groundbreaking ceremony, as I mentioned, was, was just a few weeks ago on August 27th. Uh, it was right before the very last concert in the park, an amazing day. Uh, all of council was, was there, hundreds of members of, of the community was there, and we celebrated uh, turning over dirt in the official launch of this project. Um, such a wonderful day, um, and uh, really uh, had a number of displays out uh, so the community could uh, both watch videos and a, a fly-through of the building, uh, as well as uh, visual displays throughout the park. Communications plan uh, that, that the city council asked for. And so we'll, we'll talk about a number of components and then, uh, of course, answer any questions from the city council. Uh, and so uh, the construction sign uh, uh, will be going up over the next week. It is a four by four sign um, uh, consistent with standard practices and the, and the city council's request. There will be direct contact information on uh, the construction site, uh, phone numbers for uh, all of the three primary individuals, the construction manager, the city's project manager, as well as the superintendent for the construction firm. Uh, and we will also have the, uh, web, the, the website available uh, on the site for people to uh, uh, get to the website and, um, and, and get to a host of information. So uh, regular updates. And so there, there'll be a number of public meetings uh, that uh, we'll receive um, uh, will be given to the public in various bodies. So uh, first off, we wanted to talk about uh, the city's plan for regular recurring public monthly updates. And so as the, as the city council knows, there is an advisory committee uh, that has been supporting this project. That advisory committee is really made up of um, two individuals uh, from the city council, two individuals from the planning commission, two individuals from the Park and Recreation Commission, and uh, two individuals from the San Bruno Community Foundation uh, that is providing a $50 million, $50 million grant uh, to support the cost of, of, of this facility. And so that is a uh, eight-person uh, advisory committee and also supported by a host of staff. Uh, those meetings uh, will become public meetings. Uh, we will agendize them. Uh, they will be uh, uh, streamed on Zoom and, and should we go in person. Um, uh, they will they, uh, the public will be able to attend in person. The lead presenter will be Rod, our project manager, George Sannon, uh, the construction manager, key staff will be present, as well as um, we have um, secured the attendance of the contractor to attend those meetings uh, virtually. And so those meetings will begin in October of 2021, so beginning next month. And the target time that, that we pick for these meetings is for these public meetings to occur actually right before our regular uh, public park and recreation commission. Uh, and so uh, um, we are uh, looking at a start time of approximately uh, 5.30 on the uh, third Wednesday of every month. And so we will get, get that information out to the community. Uh, and uh, we know that the city council had a desire to have the have the contractor be available at a public meeting. Um, uh, our, our recommendation and the communication plan is to have that at the advisory committee meeting uh, where, where if any member of the public does have an issue, uh, they can come to that public meeting and really uh, have the meeting address at sort of the lowest level poss possible versus um, uh, having uh, that request go directly to the city council meeting. Uh, and so those will be, again, public meetings uh, open to the public on a monthly basis every third Wednesday. Uh, next, quarterly project updates to the city council, uh, beginning on a quarterly basis, uh, December, March, June, September, uh, quarterly updates. Uh, and these are presentations, uh, public presentations at, at public meetings. Um, 
at the San Bruno Community Foundation on January, April, July, and October. Those will be led by the city's project manager. And then a host of other communications. So uh, a monthly written communication uh, to the city council that will be provided uh, and, and developed by both the project manager and the construction manager, uh, sort of an industry standard uh, practice that uh, both our project manager and construction manager uh, which will do. Uh, monthly website updates that we will push out uh, on the website to have um, current information if any member of the public wants to go uh, on, on the website. Uh, we are also uh, in the process of, of acquiring a live time-lapse camera feed that will provide real-time images 24-7. Uh, and so that, that camera feed will be, um, uh, will, will arrive here uh, in the next week and, 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 and go up and, and provide those, those live camera feeds. Uh, responses to the public. And so uh, any member of the public that has uh, a question, uh, again, can contact uh, the project manager um, and, or, or they can actually contact the project manager, the construction manager, uh, or a representative from the construction firm but we really designated the city's project manager to be the city's point person to ensure that any inquiry from the public uh, received a, a timely response. Uh, weekly notices, all, all the required uh, road closure notices or, or notifications uh, to, to neighbors will occur on a weekly basis. As we know with construction, uh, there will be times when the, the road network is impacted. This project does include a realignment of City Parkway uh, and so uh, as those road closures uh, come up, there will be notifications to the neighbors. Uh, and regular communications um, uh, as needed on our website, post to social media, uh, and, and on Channel One. We're currently in the process of uh, redesigning the, the project website. There is an active project website, uh, but we are in the process of redesigning that to a more construction-focused website that, of course, will have links to all the documentation and and, and presentations that have uh, happened today, but, but we're refocusing uh, the website to be uh, construction focused to, to provide that sort of primary resource of what's happening now uh, to the community. Next step, so uh, during the month of September, uh, what can the public expect? And so the construction fence, as any of you have been over there, is now in, uh, installed and uh, the, the, the area is cordoned off. Uh, there's mobilization uh, of the site occurring, including uh, the, the the delivery of construction trailers. Uh, there there are a number of trees that need to be removed. Uh, that process will be happening uh, in September. Uh, there's a number of uh, abatement uh, efforts that are needed as we prepare for for, for demolition and the pre-demolition preparation. Uh, and the demolition of the facilities um, will begin uh, in the latter part of September. Uh, the public should not expect a big wrecking ball uh, that only happens in the movies nowadays, uh, uh, but it, it will be a very uh, facilitated process but that will begin towards the, the end of, of, of September, uh, and they'll begin sharing up um, uh, areas on the site, uh, and there's a number of hillside work that needs to be done. Uh, and so follow us, uh, of course, on all the uh, city social media accounts and, and uh, uh, our communications team and the project manager, uh, manager will begin to actively push out information uh, related to the project. Uh, and so with that, that concludes the brief presentation. We, were the, we know the council was interested in uh, the, the various components of the communication plan. And so we wanted to present that to the city council. Thank you. And thank you for the update and the presentation. If there are comments from the uh, community or uh, council members, and if you could uh, uh, raise your virtual hand now, and we'll start with Council Member Mason. I just wanted to um, thank the city manager for the update, um, and that, well, I appreciate the advisory committee being more accessible to the public. Uh, I still do want to reiterate the original request that this be a monthly update provided directly to the council. Um, I think it's really important that we are overseeing what's happening, especially because the expenditures are um, at this point uh, potentially going up given the cost of materials and that those requests will likely have to come back to us if we're not within the $50 million. Um, in addition to that, we were informed that we would be uh, informed of all change orders and those may happen on a monthly basis. Um, so while I think it's great and I, I would support the continuation of the advisory committee, 
Um, they've been, you know, meeting for years. I, I do think that it's really important at this point that the updates do come directly from uh, from the contractor, preferably, but to the council. And that, as I stated before, they don't have to be long, uh, but that they do need to be updates. And the other um, request I did want to make is also that we oh, and. And I just want to make a point about that too, is that if there are issues that come up at advisory committee that may need um, some kind of an immediate decision or discussion, we'd have to wait to agendize it just to discuss it, um, much less make any decision. So I, I do just want to stick to the original request of a monthly update to the full council on where we are. And I did want to also ask that we be provided a timeline as soon as possible on the phasing. Uh, what, you know, what are the phase? What do the phases look like? Um, and what is the timeline within each one of those phases? Um, and I think let me make sure there's nothing else in my notes. I think that's it. Um, and uh, the I think oh I see okay sorry I had another note here. I also wanted to ask when we'd be presented with the business plan for the RAC. Um, I know that we've, I know that one has been presented, but when it would be publicly presented so that the public is aware of what the plan looks like and what the plans are to keep the, um, the RAC op operating. Um, and then lastly, on a, on a note is just thanking all of the staff who worked on the groundbreaking. It was very well done. Um, and the amount of work that probably went into coordinating with so many different individuals that were invited to the event probably was a significant amount of time and work. So thank you to the staff. It was really quite beautiful. Vice Mayor Medina. Yes, uh, thank, thank you for that presentation, City Manager Grogan. Um, would, is the email going to be provided on that bulletin board? Um, sometimes it, it, it's a lot easier to send an email than to call people. Um, so that's my first question. Uh, making sure that we do have a frequent, frequently asked question um, FAQ on the website. Um, so that people could kind of um, be given what questions that, that are out there. Um, if, if a quick reminder on what's being salvaged from, from the uh, rec center um, and um, just clarifying on uh, Council, Councilwoman Mason's updates, um, we are getting those in writing monthly and the, the, the presentation to council is quarterly. Wanted to make sure I got that right. And um, I also support obtaining a copy of the construction schedule. It is my understanding that the uh, contractor does provide a, uh, a, a construction schedule um, and it's updated quite frequently. So it'd be great to have that. Um, if not, mm -hmm. some, some form of that um, on the website. And of course, the business plan, we do have a document, but we do not have any um, pricing yet on what these facilities would be operating at. So those are my questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. What I'm going to do at this time, um, between Council Member Mason and Vice Mayor Medina, City Manager, there were uh, a few questions, and so maybe we can address those. I want to certainly give Council Member Hamilton and then uh, Council Member Salazar an opportunity, then we can circle back around with the Council again. Sure. Um, let me begin with uh, Council Member uh, Mason's uh, questions. Uh, there was a, a number there. Um, with regard to the construction schedule, uh, both Council Member Mason and Council Member Medina, absolutely, uh, both of the, the project manager and the construction manager are meeting with the contractor and they are fine tuning uh, the, the timeline and the work that uh, will be happening in each phase and that information will be published on the website. It will be a part of the status report and uh, and, and, and updated uh, monthly as appropriate. Uh, and you will certainly receive that both in written form and uh, when the presentations occur. Uh, the, the, all the recommendations about uh, things to have on the website, uh, the schedule, uh, FAQs, um, uh, we, we, we will uh, address those, um, and I, I believe all of those are intended uh, already to be on the website or, or are already on there. Uh, with regard to what is being salvaged, uh, 
we will include that um, in the in the first um, monthly report. I don't want to. We, we we didn't prepare to answer that question. I know a lot of people have asked: uh, Is the floor being salvaged? Yes. As a part of the um, the contract, uh, the the uh, general contractor does have a subcontractor that is a salvage contractor, and so they will be going in and, and salvaging uh, materials that we can provide a list of those. Uh, with regard to the monthly meetings, uh, absolutely, we do understand that Council Member Mason made a request to have the, the contractor at a monthly uh, city council meeting. Uh, and looking at and what's sort of normal uh, and, and commonplace and sort of ensuring that we have the, the right amount of meetings, but not having a, a monthly council uh, update, a monthly uh, rack update, and, 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 um, and all of the monthly reports, it is our professional recommendation uh, that a, the staggered approach that we outlined, which is a monthly advisory committee meeting that includes eight, eight members, two members of the city council, two members of the planning commission, two members of the park Rec commission, and two members of the foundation meet monthly uh, where the contractor as well as the project manager, construction manager will be there. The city council and the public will receive a written public work, uh, update that will be on the website. Uh, in addition, there will be quarterly updates uh, both at the city council um, and at the um, San Bruno Community Foundation. Uh, Council Member Mason uh, mentioned a number of potential actions that would need to be agendized. Uh, whether those need to be agendized or happen is sort of different from any monthly update. Uh, you can't make a decision uh, at a monthly update if it's not agendized. And so if we do have an item that needs to be agendized, we will agendize that absolutely uh, and bring that uh, to, the, to the appropriate body. So uh, no worries. And, um, concern that we will not uh, be able to bring those to the council uh, in a timely fashion. Just if uh, city manager, if, if I could, there was also uh, the business plan, which both uh, uh, vice mayor and council member brought up um, as well as change order. Right. So um, we, we've committed to inform the city council of, of change orders that that's our normal customary process. We will do that uh, with regard to the business plan. Um, staff is working on that. The council knows that there was a, um, a positional request that, uh, that, that was not approved to help with that. Um, we are looking at when to bring that back to the city council. A number of the, the uh, um, comments of that the city council made at that time was let's sort of get through with the groundbreaking and uh, and, and launch the project before we, we, we look at that position. Uh, but staff, uh, it, it is on their work plan. Uh, as we mentioned before, the, the main effort, uh, frankly, to date has been working on getting the building permitted and working on bringing the contractors on board. And then uh, staff will be just devoting uh, time to returning to the business plan and bringing uh, recommendations and actions uh, before the city council. You do have that written report, but there is an implementation action plan that goes with that, uh, that, that is still a work product that uh, staff will need to get to. Um, and, and so that, that will happen. Uh, resources, of course, uh, are a significant issue. Uh, there was also a question about putting the email address on uh, the uh, construction sign. Uh, I don't have an answer for that, but we'll talk about that with the team. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a, uh, I'm going to turn to the uh, public, but I want to check in with Council Member Hamilton and Salazar if you have anything at this moment with questions. I don't have any questions, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll uh, uh, chime in with everyone else saying, you know, this is exciting to have this project uh, starting up and uh, really appreciate the update. Council Member Hamilton? Uh, I'll ditto my colleagues' comments on that. But I have no additional questions at this time. Thank you. Um, we do have a member of the public uh, with questions or comments, if we could uh, bring him in at this time. And anybody else from the public, this would be the time to raise your hand because we're going to bring it back to council after. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I just got two questions. Is um, the new... Uh, Center is that going to have the same amount of employees that, that we had at the old center, and if not, will the costs that are going to be in this business plan cover any new staffing? Thank you. Thank you for your questions. <clears throat> um, city manager, do you have um, 
I know that's in the business plan, if, if I'm correct, which I know we're, we're still working on. So, so the, the business plan does have a recommended uh, organizational structure as well as uh, cost, both a cost structure and a revenue structure as a part of that. Um, there's a business plan and, and then there's sort of the work that needs to be done as we march to opening day uh, and putting together the implementation action plan. Uh, and so, yes, the, uh, the, at a high level, the answer to uh, the com uh, community members' uh, questions, yes, they are incorporated in the business plan. Uh, will there need to be additional and augmented staffing? Yes. Uh, does the business plan have a revenue structure that covers that? Yes. Uh, when we talk about staffing of, the, of our community services division, that is sort of a longer conversation uh, that we um, sort of don't have time uh, to go into now that, that is really a, a part of that uh, plan. And, and there, there's, a, there's a staffing model that is laid out very clearly uh, within that business plan. Uh, and when we look at the staff that uh, the department has today, um, they have, actually have uh, less staff than they had two and a half years ago. And so there, there's there's a number of things, and, and we haven't been running programs right for for uh, at least a year and a half of those two years. And so there's a number of staffing configurations, and and sort of there's there's a new community room that 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 will provide rental revenue, and staffing that and having the maintenance standards uh, for that uh, is, is factored into the business plan. That's a level of of uh, or an added program that we don't have now. So we will certainly have to have to staff for that program, but. There is a, a, a business plan model that has the uh, uh, expenses being covered by the revenue. Okay, thank you. And we're going to bring it back to the city council and uh, Councilmember Mason. Yeah, I, I wanted to better understand um, what the what the request is to council right now. I know it's a uh, it's under um, reports. But I'm wondering if you're asking for a majority of council to say that in lieu of a monthly report to the public, it would be the advisory committee that the reports are made to. Because um, although I made the request, it was supported by a majority of council to have a monthly update to the council. And so this is being, it sounds like this is being proposed as an alternate to the request. Um, and I, you know, I think it's one thing to have a written report. I do think it's another thing to come uh, to the council with an actual a presentation um, that the public can watch and we make it accessible to, uh, to the public as accessible as possible. And I think most of us know that the council is probably going to be um, potentially more well known than the committees, um, as we just heard from one of our committees that it's sometimes hard to get attendance and they've gone up because of social media, but committees don't have the same um, necessarily social media presence or, you know, invitations to attend meetings, et cetera, as the council may have. So I guess I would just call it outreach. So what I'm really trying to get at is where's the maximum um, potential for transparency for the public to watch what's happening on a monthly basis for report outs. And I still do believe that that's with the council. Um, I also wanted to ask what, what authority is the advisory committee taking on uh, if this should move forward because um, up until now, my understanding was that they were assisting with uh, getting the RAC to the groundbreaking. Um, so what exactly would this look like and what decisions would be made slash recommendations by the committee? So uh, beginning with uh, the first questions to the mayor. There oh, are no no. Sorry, Manager. Should I? let me just ask the last question so that they're all together. Um, you did make a comment about the council um, not approving the $194,000 position um, this year. And I wanted to make sure that I was clear because I believe the um, the RAC business plan was already received. And so I'm not, I just want to make sure I'm clear because um, what, what I think is being requested is just um, a clear presentation on what the business plan is and it appears to already be written. So where, um, I guess, where do we need the additional position right now to have a presentation on the business plan? Uh, City Manager, do you want me to go uh, to Councilmember Hamilton in her first question, or did you want to? Uh, uh, sure. Uh, why don't I provide a, a brief response uh, to uh, Councilmember Mason? Um, the agenda item uh, that we're uh, uh, 
uh, dealing with us now is a presentation on the uh, communication plan. There's not an agenda of action. Uh, should, uh, the council uh, did ask staff to come back with a communication plan. There was certainly a request by Council Member Mason to have the contractor attend a monthly uh, meeting uh, and be present at the city council. Staff did express some concerns with that at that time and said, let us go back and develop uh, a communication plan and present that to you. And that's what we're doing tonight. Uh, that communication plan does not include the request that council member Mason made for the contractor uh, to come to the city council uh, and provide a, a monthly update at the council meeting. It does, however, include a monthly uh, update report to the city council as well as the public um, and a monthly present, uh, presentation uh, public at the RAC advisory committee that includes eight members of, 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 of um, various bodies uh, in the community. It is staff's professional recommendation that that, that is the appropriate uh, venue for the contractor to be present at uh, with the goal of, of to, to address any issues that on a monthly basis at the at the lowest level possible. And, and as we said that um, there will absolutely be transparent communication. There's contact information uh, on the sign. Uh, there will be social media posts. There will be ways that people, if they have a concern, can reach out and actually get that concern addressed than having to come uh, at a public comment uh, at a city council meeting. And then we do have a project manager that has managed a, 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 a host of public projects that can uh, opine on what is normal uh, and, and, and commonplace and, and, and what actually works for an efficient uh, well, well, uh, project. Uh, with regard to the business plan, uh, absolutely uh, what I articulated was that um, at budget time, staff did request the rest of the addition of a position that was actually a restoration of another position. It was not a net new position uh, to the department. Um, but that position was to support, it was a deputy director position that is included within the business plan uh, and would support the development of all the work that needs to happen during the two-year construction cycle, as well as into the new facility. And so uh, because that position was not approved, that workload still needs to be done, recognize that, uh, and staff will do that, um, as I mentioned to, to council on numerous occasions. Staff's primary focus up until this point has been project management of the project to get the permits approved and to get groundbreaking. And now that we've accomplished that, we intend to return to the business plan with the staffing and the resources we have. That does not mean that that will be the only resources that we have. We will um, again return to the city council uh, with um, a presentation of the organizational structure as well as the staffing uh, to, uh, to operate the facility. Um, with, I think that, that concludes my response to council member Mason's question. Thank you, city manager, uh, council member Hamilton. So, um, I, I mean, I like the idea of having the, the, the subcommittee or the, 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 the um, advisory committee meetings and having um, the public and have an opportunity to engage with the folks at the lowest level, as, as was said. Um, but I, I do share a concern that, you know, there's, there's, there's two members of, of the city council on that advisory committee, but there's three that are not. And for the three that are not, there would be no avenue for asking questions because it would be inappropriate for us to, for the other three members to attend the uh, advisory meeting and participate in it in any way. Um, so the, might I offer as a, as perhaps a compromise is in addition to, to the, what's listed in the communication plan, perhaps just have staff provide a um, summary once a month of what was presented at the advisory committee to the full council. Um, and that would give the, the rest of us an opportunity to, to ask questions. I would, it wouldn't be, a, I don't think we would have time during our meetings to do a full rehash of everything that happened at that advisory um, um, committee meeting, but just, you know, it would be almost like a report out. Uh, this is, you know, this is what was discussed. There were there were concerns from the from the public about X, Y, and Z. Those were addressed. 
um, and and then you know the the, the meat of the of what was what was you know, presented at the um, at the uh, advisory committee, and the rest of it can just be in the packet for our for our um, for our education. I'm just offering that as a potential compromise. Thank you, Council Member. Any other uh, comments or questions from uh, colleagues on this on the topic or the discussion? Well, can I get an answer on whether that's feasible? <laughs> Thank you, Council Member. Or, or that could even be considered anything. City Manager, I, I'm going to uh, sorry to bring this into on this again, but. Um, what what are your, what are your thoughts on what Councilmember Hamilton said? As as a city manager's uh, get getting ready or gonna turn off his turn on his mic, I would say, you know, um, what I think is most critical and important is that issues don't wait. On, is, I shouldn't say issues, concerns, or information to the community doesn't wait a month. That's why at the lowest level, there's those phone numbers and websites and that they can contact immediate, not to wait, because if I have to wait three weeks to be able to say, I have a concern and I live nearby, I think that would be a challenge to me. Um, I know as some, some in the community may not know, but uh, each council member and the city manager have a one-on-one, -on -one, which certainly things can be updated and or concerns can be raised too, so those can be brought forward. Um, so I do feel that it, what the ask was, was to have a, an availability for the community and the public to kind of to have those interests to be updated on that, but as well as to have that opportunity to ask more of those detailed questions as the last speaker did. Oh, sure. Um, I, I was looking for Rod, the city's project manager. Um, yeah, I'll see Chair, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for interrupting. If he's still looking, if our city manager is still looking for him, I was going to propose that, look, the first meeting is going to be Zoom, I'm presuming. So let's proceed with the plan to go forward as proposed as we get more information when we do meet in person. Because currently, if, it's gonna, if we're going to be meeting in Zoom, then all council could watch that Zoom meeting after it's recorded. And then um, we can kind of go forward from there because it, it is, it is um, and I'm relying on my construction experience, it is, it is a lot of additional work. Um, I think we have plenty of update time with the proposal. Um, I don't see too much of an improvement in, in, in that information by having the construction manager there at council every month. We're, we are getting a copy of the report and we're also have access to seeing the, um, the committee uh, meeting. Now, if something is not correct in, in, in that assumption or what I heard, then, then I, I would change my mind, but I think we have pretty good coverage. And, and I would say, because I think, Mayor, I just, yeah, sorry, please, I'm council member, please. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, right. Mr. Mayor, to interrupt you. Um, no, no. Mayor, I just want to just quickly reiterate that my, my suggestion was not that the construction manager provide that update, it, that it would, a member of city staff would provide a, a recap of the, of the previous advisory meeting and then that and then that item would be on the agenda and it would give the rest of us an opportunity to um to ask a question or or whatever um because i'm 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 also understanding the the you know the, the timing issue you know paying people to be after hours all those types of things that, that, that are you know additional challenges to having um the, that full meeting take place during a council meeting um so i just wanted to make sure that that was clear in my suggestion Okay, thank you. And I, and I was looking for Rod and I do not um, see him in the attendees or uh, unfortunately at this time. And and I just, and then we're going to go to the city manager. And I did want to say that council member Mason asked about the, uh, the advisory committee, you know, what is, I think the question was like, what authority do they have? I think she said it nicer. 
but um, uh, it, it has none because it obviously does not have a majority of any body um, and things uh, all um, from there had gone to Park and Rec, had gone to the foundation, had gone to the city council, and then city council obviously makes the uh, approvals um, on those expenditures and items. City manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, absolutely. With regard to the advisory committee, they, they are advisory. Again, a update, a agendized update at the city council uh, is not an opportunity to make a decision. So should there need to be a decision made, that would need to be agendized appropriately at the city council, whether there is a agendized update on the city council on a monthly basis or not. With regard to uh, providing a monthly update uh, on the project at a city council meeting. Uh, my professional recommendation would be that if we do that, it is the city's project manager uh, that do that uh, versus uh, having a staff person then take on that because the, the, the knowledge transfer and then being able to respond to whatever questions the city council has, I wouldn't want to sort of have, have a gap in, in, and, and have the staff member uh, not be able to, uh, to answer the question. The, the city's day-to-day -day point person and liaison to the contractor and the contract manager or project manager. That is the person that is going to provide all of the all of the updates to all the various bodies. That person is also the person that will respond to constituent questions as well as any question that the council member has. So absolutely, council members can ask the city manager a question, but just like the uh, public can reach out to the project manager, the, the, the city council can reach out uh, to the project manager. And I, I don't want you to think that because there's not a forum at your agendized business meetings every month, that there's not a way that if you have a question to, to, um, to, to get the answer. Um, what the communication plan that was developed, it was developed in order to provide transparency, provide written reports for the public, have social media posts on a regular recurring basis, a monthly, uh, uh, report to the pub, to the to the city council and a forum where there is a monthly public meeting that anyone can come to, uh, to, to to hear about what's going on or to ask any questions. If the city council would also like to have that at one of your two monthly business meetings, we can plan for that conversation, book the time and, 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 and have that. My recommendation would be that if we do that, we bring the resource that has the, inf the information to respond to any questions you have, and that's the city's project manager. And I did see that uh, uh, Rod is back um, with us, just as an FYI. Uh, Council Member Hamilton? All right. So I'll, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll try one last compromise. Um, and and uh, I'm, hearing all the, I'm hearing all the feedback, and I understand it. What if once a month under an under announcements and presentations there's a reminder for folks about the monthly advisory meeting upcoming letting people know so those those members of the public and there are many who come only to this meeting to get their information about the city that we're at least once a month reminding people that the advisory com um, committee is meeting that they have the that they have the the ability to attend those meetings and ask, ask questions directly and also provide the, uh, the other um, communication um, uh, um, uh, avenues that are, that are listed on the sign. That would um, be, it wouldn't be, it would, it wouldn't even change month to month. Uh, Council Member Hamilton, um, this is an important project to the community. Uh, and as, as things start to evolve, I think people have more interest, just like, what are you salvaging? You would think people were saying, but I mean, they're sentimental. There's uh, folks just want to know. Um, I think that being able to under uh, presentations and announcements to announce uh, the meeting and the avenues of which always to remind folks of where they can, because again, my, my objective would be to address things uh, quickly and not wait um, because then they just become more challenging and frustrating. So um, yeah, with just it having a pres uh, an announcement at, of the upcoming meeting, uh, it's, it, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, Council Member Mason, and then um, I want to hear if there's anything else from the Vice Mayor and Council Member Salazar so we can uh, move on uh, getting to consent. Please, uh, Council Member. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I would just reiterate the importance of this coming to the Council. I appreciate staff's time. 
and the recommendation, um, but I do want to say at the end of the day, if we go over $50 million, it's the five of us that will be asked to make that decision. Um, that's, and um, and we will be asked to approve anything over 50 million. And so I do think it's important that it be coming to the uh, council. And um, as far as, again, transparency, I understand that we will be getting a monthly report, but a lot of this is not so much about what we're getting and what we can read via email or on the website. But for those um, members of the public who are watching our meetings, what they too are able to see at our city council meetings. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor, your mic is on. Did you wish to speak? I'm good. I, I, I just want to make sure that when we start having these meetings, which there's, there's going to be one next month, and it will be via Zoom, and it will be recorded, and so anybody could, could all of us could watch it, and the public is invited to attend the meeting if that's correct, and they could submit the question in advance so that it can be answered. And with the FAQ on the website, I think we're going to have a pretty good coverage of questions. Understood. Uh, city manager, you want to? Thank you. Uh, we, we can certainly include it as a uh, monthly announcement. The, the one thing that uh, staff reminded me of is um, at the advisory committee meeting, it's actually a, a, a form that's better to uh, delve down into an issue that may be raised and, and address and versus sort of it'd be just a presentation at a business meeting where the public can make a comment and there can't be that dialogue. But sort of having it at the committee level actually allows a better format uh, and, and more time for, for those issues to be talked about and maybe uh, an appropriate response given uh, at that time. So just wanted to make that point, but, but absolutely we can, uh, include an announcement on the agenda uh, of uh, where the, the monthly uh, uh, presentation updates will be, uh, as well as all of the other um, avenues that we talked about. Okay, thank you for uh, the uh, the feedback on that last thing about being able to dive more uh, as well. Um, okay, uh, colleagues, do we have a somewhat of a concurrence from some of us or that um, the presentation that the manager has made is fine with the addition of announcing and with under presentations and announcements of the um, advisory meeting and again the other communication outlets that residents have immediately um, you know via phone email etc for now obviously everything can be modified later councilmember hamilton this is an announcement and presentation so there's we can't we can't recommend anything anyway so it's, I don't think it matters. Over Good call, Well, it was within the presentation, but okay. Uh, well, with council member Hamilton's comment then, is it uh, city manager, do you have enough information from us? Or uh, what, I, what I don't want to see is that we're leaving here and, and the city manager saying, well, okay, I, I've heard a multitude of things, so I'm not sure what we're saying. Uh, city manager? He gave us a presentation of what, what he was wishing for for the communications plan, which was asked to come back to us, but maybe there's clar clarity from the city attorney that needs to be had. I, I think direction and the desire of the city council is clear. Uh, we'll, we'll proceed with the communication plan with the addition of, of adding a, uh, on, on the announcement at the monthly city council meetings, um, the information about uh, the advisory uh, committee meetings and uh, uh, proceed forward. Uh, there were a number of, of questions asked uh, with regard to information that's going to be on the website. We, we noted those. Uh, and then I believe Council Member Medina uh, asked a question with regard to um, what information would, would, will be salvaged and we will uh, in include that in a subsequent update as well as provide the City Council with uh, the, the calendar information uh, and a timing on returning to you with the business plan uh, implementation action plan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, um, City Manager, for again the presentations and uh, the questions. And Rob, thank you for um, uh, standing by and uh, um, appreciate that.